Hello everyone and welcome to the Lobster Roll Season 2, Week 0, The Lobster Labs. It's a Swiss tournament this time, I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are starting out. Jam Time and Trip Masu, or Trip Masu, not quite sure where that's supposed to be. Anyway, let me know how to pronounce your name exactly, if you care. And yeah, we're starting with that, and we are... So yeah, it is a Swiss tournament. This time around, for this week, it will be back to double double elimination for the following weeks, I believe. But, yeah, this is more just a general warm-up tournament we're trying to do, just to, you know, get people back into the swing of things after a two-week break. But, you know, it's still nice to have. So, Jam Time Drip Master are starting out already. And these are our maps. Intersection, Tanger, oh. That's hard to see. Intersection, Titan Duel, Ravage, Cobalt Dream, Tangerine, Shimmer Shore, Bandit Plains, Small Supreme Battlefield, and Rogue's River. And Small Supreme Battlefield being the first one banned. Titan and Intersection both banned as well. So, for if you can't easily read the rules, basically, bans go you flip a coin, whoever gets the flip gets first ban, second person gets two bans, and then the first person gets another ban and then gets to pick from the remaining maps. So, all the bands are done. We have we have Ravage, Cobalt, Tangerine, Shimmer Shore, Bandit Plains for jam time to pick. And they want Ravaged. So we're going to be on Ravaged. I could use a different thing for that. Anyhow, that's for later, because I believe this is going to be the pick rule from here on out, or at least for Season 2. Anyhow. So, Ravaged. Fairly straightforward map. This is... Of the maps available, probably... Between that and Titan Duel, the ones that it's there the most straightforward to play. The rest are either big or a little unconventional from 1v1. So, might as well get started. Jam time is set up. Okay, everyone is set up. Let's go. Jam time going for shields. And we have Tripmasu going for Cloaky. Uh, okay, that's not a matchup you often see on Ravaged. It's no one going spiders. I I'm actually kind of curious to see how this plays out. I mean, granted, these are, these are kind of middle-ranked players, so... Not surprising, they're a bit more comfortable with some of the more, I guess, straightforward factories. I mean, I say that, yeah, Cloaky is so dependent late, in late game on being able to do shenanigans with Iris. Still, it's, or not just Iris, actually, Conjurer's area cloak as well. But still, it is kind of a straightforward factory, at least in terms of how the Raider Riot Skirmisher Triangle works. Moment, though, neither player really pushing too much of an advantage. Jam time with the happy dirt bag, find the glaive, and well, did some damage, but glaive's auto heal. So ultimately, just some information. Both players know the other's factory, and dirt bag bandit for jam time. That is an interesting composition. On the other hand, Dream Master just slowly getting more and more glaives as they build their economy. Interesting going for. Well, basically the general idea that you try to build up your economy without using the factory. I mean, you can do this, and I know that... I can't remember if it was Randy, I think, that suggested doing this. But it's also worth noting, priority is there for a reason. So if you're not... If you don't... If you're looking at this and going, oh, I don't want to have to micromine factory production. It's like, well, you don't. You just set construction priority to low, and everything else will be building in advance. So... I'm not sure why players aren't doing that, unless it's something I don't know about, but last I checked, that does work equally well. Well, it doesn't work as well is running in a single glaive when your opponent has the commander still on their base. Close, though, but yeah, that glaive was not taking advantage of the field of view. I mean, first off, not taking advantage of range, because, I mean, let's look at this, like, the... Oops. Ah, no. Yeah, the range from where it was couldn't really hit the glaive, but also... The metal extractor blocks line of sight. A little surprising there, 
but Dream Master at least was able to put some pressure on, so can't deny it, that was at least meaningful. I mean, it slowed down the commander a little bit, giving Dream Master a bit more to a bit more time to start building up their own economy to the south. But I'm a little bit unsure how exactly this is going to work out in terms of late game stuff. I mean, so far it's okay. Oh, well. Oh, oh, that oh, that's cheeky. Oh, that is cheeky. Throwing a dirt bag around in the metal extractor. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It would just take a little extra time to terraform it down, but still. It does slow it down a little bit. The only downside there is that that's possibly something Jam Time might take later. Still, novel idea. Have not seen that before. I don't expect it to be, like, super effective, but, I mean, it's a thing you can do. Still, though, Trimasu is well, slowly but surely getting a bit of an advantage and is, in fact, going for that center expansion set. So I suppose that dirtbag will, to whatever degree it can, pay off. At the same time, Glaze coming around the side, but Outlaw slowing them all to a crawl while Bandits rip them to shreds, and that is how... That is how Shieldbot fights, fights Glaze. I mean, at the same time, Trimasu isn't even really going for Glaze anymore. They've decided they're not going to bother. Not enough to raid... Too many anti-raiding tools being deployed by Jam Time. I do think Trimasu could get a little bit more out of Glaze, but I don't disagree with their approach right now. I just... I would be a little concerned about counterattack. They are expanding very naked right now. Like, I don't think they have a single static, piece of static defense on the board. No, they don't. They are relying entirely on this Reaver and their frontline forces, and on Jam Time attacking through the western side of the lake. Which... Thankfully for Trimasu, it was exactly what Jam Time is doing. Oh, wow, that dirtbag did pay off. Saved a bandit. Okay, you know, that I did not expect that, but hey, how about that? Jam Time's little bandit drop, actually, dirtbag drop actually paid off. I mean, for now, it's... Wait, are they going for that? Not entirely sure they are going for that. Still, though, I'm just surprised that Jam Time actually managed to make that dirtbag thing. I just, I've never seen someone use dirtbags like that. Like to set up walls, to block out metal extractors, that kind of thing. It's a really smart move. I just haven't seen it. I think it's dirtbags. Like, utility units are a little less straightforward to run in Zero K, so it's, you know, because you're spending metal on units that aren't directly attacking your opponents, so this feels a little weird, but it's not a bad idea. And dirt bags aren't that expensive. They're, what are they, like 20? 30. Yeah. Not very expensive, but they do offer a lot in terms of being able to just, well, mess with your opponent. Is Trim Master even trying to build a metal extractor there? Like, they could. The, the commander would just auto terraform down to make that work, but. Or can they? Can they not? Hang on. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. And is this. Is this actually... Oh my goodness! No, they can. They can. You just hold... Yeah, or build there or something. You kind of have to hold the... Button down to auto-terraform. But yeah, that's a fair... I... I... Wow. Right. I... Guess you do have to actually manually level that. I... Here I thought it would just automatically do it for you. But nope. So... Yeah, dirt bag. Paying for itself. Far better than I thought it would. And Jam Time at this point has managed to convert that into quite the impressive army here. I mean, yes, there is a knight. Trip Masu does have one. They have exactly one knight. Actually, they have three, sorry, but they still are going up against a bunch of rogues, which, granted, have been nerfed recently a little bit, but not so much that they can't deal with the rogue. I mean, with the knight. They, that's kind of what they're here to do. And certainly dealing with the Reavers is going to be no problem. Jam time, however, is surprisingly a bit behind. Trim also able to build up quite a bit down in the south, getting a lot of overdrive with, ah, Fusion Reactor in the main base. Yeah, that is, that is how you do it if you're not able to get quite as much territory. Although, to be fair, Jam time isn't behind, oh, actually, yeah, it's a little behind. They don't have, Trim also has the western expansion, Jam time doesn't have the eastern one. 
but mostly it's just overdrive. That fusion reactor, and not to mention Jamham actually not just lacking overdrive, lacking power. They need to build some more energy structures, which they are in the process of doing, but it's going to lead to at least some amount of metal of metal loss, metal excess. It's That's the thing that happens when you haven't quite gotten your energy. It's unfortunate, but so it goes. At this point, though, Rogue's coming in, and the Iris... No, Conjure, never mind. Conjure up with the Area Cloak. Mostly looks like for the Knight, but it may not matter. Dream Master Forced Retreat, losing the Western Expansion. Rogue's coming in off the flank. Nice use of the... Th nice use of the Thug there. I cannot recognize this as a Thug. Like, that is a Thug, right? Not a Convict? Yeah, it's a Thug, not a Convict. I've been casting this game for eight years. I think I would know that, but... Sometimes silhouettes can be deceiving. Anyway... With that, though, Jam Time's commander also in trouble. Able to jump away. Luckily for them, slow machine gun bullets are a thing. Another Freyda shot should stun out that knight. Is that knight? Not able to get to the commander, but at the same time, the rest of Jam Time's forces forced to retreat. Many of them killed, most of them just routed out of there. Still, Trim Master able to maintain control over that center western expansion not quite able to get rid of Jantan's commander but Jantan's commander has been forced out of the action with Street Master's commander they're able to stay on the front lines they don't have to worry about anything on top of that Conjurer coming in over the eastern side of the map might be spotted by the rogue ooh I think the rogue might have spotted that anyway not sure if Jam Time noticed it doesn't matter though the rogue is going to be taken out Kind of would have liked to see that run in the main base, though. Jam time already kind of prepared with outlaws running around the map. Still not quite enough. Jam time is... Oof. They have actually a great position to deal with this. Simply because all these forces are completely clumped up. They can't really dodge the rogue missiles. Not sure why the outlaw went around the side, though. Bit of a waste, I'm afraid. Same time, though, more cloaked units being dropped in. Jam Time losing the Eastern Expansion. Trimasu is maintaining quite the economic lead. And Jam Time, not even yet quite building up. They, if they start building the Air Factory, they will be able to use all this stored metal. But for now, running into a lot of issues and not using the Air Factory that's been constructed. On top of that, eight scythes coming along the western side of the map. That is not... That is not something you want to see. Not easily. So, with that... Jam Time's commander... Wait. Ah, Jam Time's commander is perfectly safe in the water. Doesn't have to worry about anything. The rest of Jam Time's stuff, though, I mean... Not so much, but it looks like the sides don't even care. Although Phoenix coming in... Interesting choice. I normally see Thunderbirds, but then again, it actually has paid off. Got rid of a couple slings without issue. Another one is on the way, so Jam Time should be able to start pushing this army back. And the sides have been spotted, or at least a couple of them have been spotted. The, the original eight are able to go past, but the rest of them are forced in the back. Over on the side, looking to take out the factory. No additional Phoenix runs on the slings, though. Would be nice to see that. Bandit doesn't quite decloak them. Looks like they're going to be able to get in unharassed. And indeed, the Scythes have made their way in. Frontline's still kind of holding, but the Scythes looking to find presumably the Air Factory to take that out. And Jam Time looks like they're a little bit preoccupied with the front lines, Haven't quite been taken in. The air units, and there is the factory getting hit hard. There is nothing to stop it. Phoenixes were just sent out to attack as well, so the factory is down. The air plant, rather, is down. The shield block factory is still up, but it's not being used for anything right now. And looks like it's days number two, though. A snitch coming in here takes out half the size. The remaining half still here, and that factory is still in jeopardy. Go for it. Don't worry about it. You will kill in time, and that's jam time's entire production infrastructure gone. Where's Jam Time even looking? Oh. I want to know where Jam Time is looking. 
Folks in the front line. That's all they can really do at this point. I mean, they've just lost their entire back line. They can rebuild it, but they don't have any constructors back there. Sorry, they have one. They have a convict and a caretaker. Fortunately, they are turning that factory into a bunch of excess metal. While well, Master continues to use all that they have. The Jam Tanks Commander coming around the back. Similar play. Might be able to take out the commander. A little hard to say. Sorry, not the commander. The factory. Jam Tanks Commander is perfectly safe. This commander is actually pretty bulked up. But it's being extremely careful at how it approaches. And fortunately, possibly a little too careful. The slings will be able to take out any defenses Jam Tanks Commander starts to set up. Still, though, the Stinger is doing its job. But while Jam Time does cavort around the back lines, it's not nearly enough. And really, honestly, they ought to upgrade the commander. I mean, building the factory is good, but they don't have enough build power to use all of the metal they have. Using Upgrading the commander should consume basically the rest of it. And also, they're going forward with the commander. They might as well. In all honesty. Like, given how they're trying to play this out. Still no further knights at home. Jam Times Commander should be able to just walk through here and take everything out. Spider Factor has been built up as well for Jam Times, so they have some reinforcements coming in, but they've lost a lot of their economy in the process. Kind of gambling on the Commander being able to take out something. I mean, the Fusion Factor isn't really in the best position to be taken out. It's, it's going down slowly, but that's mainly because there hasn't been a lot of resistance. Still, jam time. Just take out that fusion plant. That's that's what you gotta do. Take that out. Damage the knight. Ooh, just need to get out of there. Jump! Jump, jam time. There you go. Doesn't quite take out the knight. Oh, no. Oh, no. Jam time's commander not quite able to get out. And another scythe set coming in the back. Jam time has no way out of this. Dream Mouse who takes the first game. Or takes the game. It's best of one. Takes the game. And that was that. Interestingly played. No spiders except the very end. And a lot of really weird flanking behavior, but that was still pretty cool. I haven't seen dirtbags used. I haven't in, in a long time. I haven't really seen a commander used as a backline assault force. Certainly haven't seen scythes used this effectively in a long time as well. So that was really cool. Anyway, we are going to have a... I'm going to have another match. I think round one, not quite over yet. Or double check, at least. So, if we... Let's see what was going on here. <clears throat> so, so far, Fruity and MKC are done. Fruity taking the game. And who else is left? We have... Oh, Mortar and Cam actually wanted to see this one, too. Not particularly familiar with these players, so I was very curious to see how this is going to play out. Alright, so we're on Cobalt Dream. Mortar going for rovers and... Kimo, what do you got? You got hovers! Kimo very quickly grabbing the center of the map as... As you often do if you're trying to maintain a strong position. Though Kima's commander not quite able to hold it. He needs a bull to try to take it back, but it's not enough. And Mordor manages to take that instead. Fencer's pushing back, pushing back. Kima's commander, however, able to heal up. Nice use of the quill there. Still, though, Mordor maintaining solid control of the center after having taken it. Because that is how you do Cobalt Dream. You get this nice firebase in the center, you just run units through it, and that's exactly what Mordor's doing. Looking for game, it looks like. Commander up front, possibly a little too far forward. They're taking out what they can, but still, the fencer's doing the main work. Badger's alongside, behind them, and Kima decides there's no way they can maintain this. Throws in the towel, and that is two seconds of a game. Okay, well, that's the thing that happened. Well, how many, how many more do we have here? I mean, it looks like we're kind of running to the end of round one. 
We have... Who else is left? Looks like just Chrome Baki Vedanta. Oh, Buddhist Minecraft Chrome Ma Baki Vedanta. I... Let's do Buddhist and Madcraft. They're on Ravaged again, so we can get a bit of contrast from game one. All right. So again, Ravaged, but this time we are dealing... Wait, we're still dealing with Cloakie? Ah, Cloakie versus Spiders. All right, that makes a lot more sense. And a lot of backline assault with the glaives. Sheesh. Madcraft, I mean, I know they're a cloakbot specialist, but I mean, I guess they've been practicing. It didn't quite expect that degree of aggression, but there you go. Still, unfortunately, it's kind of not giving them a whole lot in the front lines. Powerful though it may have been as an approach. Madcraft. Sending reasonably okay, but that's still uh, still iffy. I mean, that's that's a lot of cloaked redbacks coming in there in the center of the map, which Madcraft can't easily address. Wow, Corny is everywhere. Who's playing Cloaky again? Didn't expect it to be Pudis, but apparently it's Pudis. In fact, surprisingly, Madcraft. Oh, actually, not surprisingly, Madcraft has not really been a player to use a whole lot of area cloak. Right, they do play Cloaky pretty exclusively, but they don't tend to use Area Cloak, I find. They do use Phantoms, they might occasionally use Scythes, but they don't Area Cloak. So, Pudis is honestly cloaking more than Cloaky, just... And Spiders being the kind of t factory it is, I mean, it's very... A lot of slower units that are reasonably powerful, like a lot of glass cannons that are slow. Has a tendency to just get really... Why is this showing me all that? That's a tendency to just require some kind of way of ambushing, either cloak or just really good scouting. It's it's like that. But yeah, that's what we see here. Madcraft at least maintaining a bit of pressure over the eastern side of the map and does have the knights. Which are a bit of a threat to Pudis. So far, though, Pudis... Oh, switching over to Cloaky, but not building anything. What is going on, Pudis? Okay, there we go. That makes a bit more sense, but still. Like, you have two factories. Repeat, build, and go. Like, you, you have two factories. You have 70 metal per second. Don't let it go to waste. Anyway, Pudis throwing up their own knights with a bunch of fleas. Probably as a distraction to the knights, possibly to get in and hit them, but... I'm also to get rid of the Phoenixes. Which, admittedly, that has been kind of Pudis' main army. Knights and Phoenix. Sorry, not Pudis. Yeah, Madcraft's main army. Pudis' main army at this point has been Redbacks, but now switching over to Iris. Iris Reavers. Same time, Fleas going around the side, able to wipe out basically everything. Still, though, again, those fleas, like I said, they're not, not bad against the knights, really. I mean, the knights can't hit that often. Fleas swarming the hell out of them. And that's why we saw Pudis go mass fleas. Same time, though, this crab providing a really nice distraction. Reavers going around. Oh! Glaive spotting them. Ambush has been, has been checked. Pudis not able to get a whole lot out of that. Iris going to go down as well, getting spotted. The Phantom likely going to target that. It's the only thing they can target, actually, in terms of range. And that is a uh, dead Nimbus, but at the cost of six Reavers. Madcraft isn't really in a position to take them back at this point, but still. Ooh! And the advanced geoplan over to the south where Pudis goes down as well, thanks to the Nimbuses. One of them being down by tarantulas, but still, it did its job. Pudis still has another advanced geoplan over the northwest. But Madcraft's assaults are causing a lot of damage. 
So this is... Yeah, that attrition is crazy. Madcraft at this point, 10,000 metal ahead on attrition. They were behind an economy pretty heavily and took a lot of damage early on, but now these Nimbuses are just wrecking everything. Poot is struggling to get back from here. Got the advanced radar, presumably... F I don't know what even to help target. They don't have a lot of long-range attacks. I mean, I guess good for them. They can see exactly where Madcraft's stuff is, but... No, oh, whoops. They can see exactly where Madcraft's stuff is. But still, it's not ideal. I mean, you're, you're looking at... And you're looking at this, and you think, I mean, you have... You have all this, which is nice, but you don't have any long-range artillery to really work with it. Nor are they building any. I mean, you know, expect slings, maybe? Or... Crabs aren't of that long range. But then, then again, it does help deal with the Nimbuses. Which have been Madcraft's main asset in the last little bit of the game. So, now a bit of a stalemate. Madcraft trying to find some way of getting back in this. Swapping over to Strider, swapping over from Cloaky. A little bit more in the way of Fiend. I mean, not really swapping over with Cloaky. They're still going for Phantoms. Phantom Glaive is their main assault force. Same time, it's a little bit truly. Madcraft's commander just grabbing a little more metal, grabbing more reclaim, taking out stuff that Pudus has built. Pudus cannot really find a way in to counterattack yet. Looking at their construction, primarily just going for crabs. Looks like they want us to go for like, slow push with three or four crabs and do a, as much damage as possible without getting hit back. Still, though, the rebuild in the Geo is complete. And nothing is really in position to take it out. I believe Madcraft is well aware of this, though. No, they're not! They have radar coverage. They probably suspect there is a Geo plant, but they don't actually have, have had any sight on it. Or haven't had any sight on it. This glaive could so easily go in and take it out, but I think Madcraft is not sure what Pudus has. Because again, area cloak. All over the place. I don't think Madcraft is even aware where Pudus' area cloak is. They will soon find out, though. Gonna run into one... Oh, no, not quite. Not quite! Going for the red back instead. Does take it out at very little cost, so... Worth. Absolutely. Fortunately, doesn't get rid of the corneas and also doesn't get in a position where they can start looking at maybe taking out that advanced geo plan. But hey, economic damage, still economic damage. So we're a little about the crab, a little about the knight, but this is not really a concern. Metal extractor after metal extractor falls to these glaives. It's Madcraft looking to also break the overdrive, not quite able to do so. Not that that's the main overdrive. The main overdrive is over here. With the advanced geo in the northwest, but it's still enough. And Madcraft continuing to just slowly grind away at Pudus' front line. And also kind of keeping Pudus from easily upgrading the geo here, because, you know, if they upgrade that, it's could go nuclear once again. But especially the one at the top, too. I mean, again, that's. That's got to be known. Oh no, they don't even have radar coverage. Madcraft has no idea about that one. Just the one over to the south, which, granted, is vulnerable to the fan to the phantoms. Madcraft, however, oof, that widow is not going to do much. I mean, it's waiting. It's not going to attack now. It, it shouldn't anyway. Doing so would be its death. Although I say that right as the Widow comes in, takes the commander, Flea's coming in to follow up. Glaives, however, should be able to save the day without too much issue. The Flea's valiant effort on their part, but it's not quite enough. Madcraft was well prepared for that. Still, though, crab coming in, it's not nothing. It is, however, also not stopped. At all, taking out the crab. Madcraft's commander able to come out of that. Actually, come out of that alive and then some of the new shield fa shield generator on top of it. 
Now Blaze coming in. Confident there's nothing to worry about over in this pit. Taking in a few more metal extractors. Maybe take out that geo plant. I mean, that's such an easy target. They might as well. Over to the north, though. Bit of concern on the on the slings, but those fleas aren't going to last too long. Back to the south. The geo plant is about to go down. And that should be that geo plant is. What? No! One more shot! One more shot! Just target the geo plant! No! Oh, that could have been a geo plant dead. Just right click the geo plant. Madcraft! No! I know this game doesn't. tries to encourage being a bit less micro oriented, but sometimes you need to micro. Sometimes it's really important that your units hit one specific. Thing. Uh, you don't care if they die, you just care if they kill this one thing. Ooh, and actually, that being said, these players might be able to find the Geo Plant as well. Though still, Pudis gradually losing more and more of their economy, and the Geo Plant does ultimately go down, so it's not the biggest deal. Geo Plant to the south is dead, but the advanced Geo to the northwest, that's what I'm curious about, but it has not been spotted. Still, though, Mac. Ooh, Macraft actually taking a few hits over the eastern side of the map. Done some damage to Pudas, but now the Glaive's coming in. It's no longer just Fleas. Madcraft trying their best to hold it off, but they just don't have the numbers. Nor do they really have the position to work from. Madcraft losing everything they had as well, but thankfully for them, they do have infinite build repeat. Why is Pudas not. Why do they not have repeat build? I do not understand this. They are losing... They're accessing metal entirely because of repeat build. That's the only reason. Or not using repeat build, to be precise. That is it. They would not be accessing metal were it not for that. I don't get that. You're just adding additional layers of complexity for your own working memory without actually getting any benefit for it. Well, anyway. Well, Fruity, you're in luck. No one's building nukes exactly, but Missile Silo is under construction. I mean, more than likely for an Inferno to take out all the wind gens in Macraft space, but... Still, missiles. Being up. No Trinity, though. I don't expect that. For how this game has gone back and forth, I don't expect a Trinity. I, I don't think either side's confident that they can hold the line long enough, because that's... I mean, it's three minutes after it's been built, but it's pretty expensive to begin with, so... Getting it is a tr is tricky. Madcraft, whoever... Not even worried about that. Going for the Dante instead. Striders we have not seen in a while in 1v1, but there we go. Dante coming out here, and I don't know if Pudis is anything really set up to deal with this. I mean, units they have just don't have the numbers. Or the firepower, for that matter. Dante coming all along the side. Nimbus as well. Hasn't, hasn't thought to go around to the advanced Geo plant. And again, doesn't know it exists. Also having to deal with the Tarantula, which unfortunately cannot be hit from the ground easily since Crab is there. And Reavers are there. Oh, but Double Widow taking taking that Dante down a peg. It's 23 seconds. Ooh, I think Crab can kill it. Oh, no, the Glaze definitely will kill it. Nothing there to defend. No, 13? Actually, that's still a lot. That is a lot of HP. Does go down, but with quite a bit of effort put behind it. No additional Dante seems to be forthcoming, though. Just back to Nimbus's. Again, though, if this advanced geo plant gets spotted at any point, that's that's going to be it for Pudis' energy. Like, so much of their energy production is that. And again, they're using a lot of area cloakers. And area cloakers are pretty energy hungry. So if that advanced geo plant goes down, there's not going to be any energy left for the area cloakers, and that would just about call it for Pudis. Though again, Madcraft doesn't appear to have thought to check. Because again, if we go back to Madcraft, they have no radar coverage, they have no memory of it, They've, they know their defensive structures. There's hints that something is up there, but they haven't actually thought to check. But another Dante is coming up. More Nimbus is on the way as well, so... They're continuing along with the same strategy, which... I don't think is going to work. Madcraft's clearly responded to this. 
<clears throat> At the same time, though, Fan oh, Phantom Knight having a bit of a hard time holding the line here. Oof. I mean, Madcraft able to at least get a pretty strong defensible position. It's just not really able to do much beyond that. Pudis, on the other hand, has the economic advantage thanks largely to Overdrive. Which, again, is thanks largely to this. And I don't see any anti-air dedicated defenses around here. I mean, the Faraday would be a problem, and the Stinger would be a problem. But the Nemesis would be able to outrange those. But again, see, it's not the front line. It's not the main target. It's just kind of there. So I can understand the hesitation. But yeah, Madcraft. Throwing Nemesis down to the southeast. That seems to be what they think is their main linchpin. They take that southeast, they push from there. I can understand the motivation. I just... Really... It's just knowing what there is. Like, knowing what I know as a spectator doesn't really do the thing. Yeah, they, they drain 16. Actually, it's 14.3, but... Sorry, 12. 12 is for area personal upkeep is one, so yeah. Speaking of, Madcraft actually running low on energy themselves, thanks to well, Reclaim and not having enough energy structures of their own. Fusion line when that's done should be enough, but that's not really relevant, though. This is what's relevant! Right here, all of these Reavers coming in along the side, and nothing really ready to stop them. Also with the Tarantula, because why not? Adding that little extra bit of anti-air support, though only one Tarantula is not going to be enough to cause actually much... Ni like, they're not going to scare with the Nimbus. Going to go down real quick, too. This attack might end up being pushed... As long as the factory survives, as long as the factory's infusion plant survives, this attack will not have worked. Though it is looking iffy whether or not that's going to happen. However, it does indeed happen. The attack has failed few wind generators down, a few metal extractors down, but so much reclaim has been set up at this base that it's just not going to be an issue. Same time, Pooja's going for the counterattack and looking pretty okay. Wait, where's the... What is the reclaim there? Or, oh. Crap, I think the widget died. Didn't expect the widget to crash, but apparently that widget has crashed. Anyhow... So, strong defense from Madcraft coming in. There should be some good reclaim as soon as they decide to go for it. Surprised they haven't decided to go for it. Honestly, they kind of need to go for it. Madcraft's economy is entirely dependent on the reclaim right now. I mean, if we actually check what it is... No. About 1,200 reclaim right in the main base. Good to see that. So they maintain that pressure. They, on top of that, maintain the reclaim. And yeah, excellent point in the chat that Madcraft easily send air in the back and shut down production completely. Absolutely, there's nothing here. Like, no defense turrets are covering the back lines at all. So, send a Nimbus, like, send the Nimbus around this way, that would wreck everything. Fortunately, I think Madcraft is so concerned about maintaining the front lines, they haven't really thought about, well, what if we break the back lines? Like, just destroy everything that way. Man, granted, the Nemesis have been essential to defending the back lines for themselves. So I, I can't totally disagree with Madcraft's strategy. It's just, it's, it's a lose-slow strategy, not a win strategy. And that's sort of the issue, is that Madcraft ran... Actually, I think we might be heading to the time limit. I believe there's a 45-minute time limit. Although, Pudis having made artillery, that should be able to get rid of Madcraft's entire defensive advantage. Or it'll help anyway, but again, it's just... Ah, 
Sometimes you gotta flank, sometimes you don't fight the front line head on. Because despite it, everything, Pudis has managed to get their attrition back into their advantage. And has to maintain a military advantage this entire time. And is about to inferno the main base. So Buddhist is about to get rid of all the Madcraft's energy structures. to the fusion plant, but still. Caretakers are down. Bunch of wind gens down. Slows down basically all of their production. The Dante is ready, but everything else is basically hooped. Still, there's at least the shield bot. The proxy shield bot factory is something, but it's... It's not a lot. And Buddhist... They're looking scary. Although, not the... Okay, that wasn't exactly the most useful Inferno. I mean, that would make sense in general, but I don't think we would have scattered that out first. Still, that is going to be... answered by Madcraft coming in with bandits. Taking out all the anti-air. Or sorry, anti-air, the artillery. Anti-air could go down as well. The gremlins are at the top and haven't spotted. Again, another Widow coming around the side. It's... It's avoiding decloak for now. Hard to tell though. Dante Degun doing very little against the crab. Does reveal a lot though, but the Inferno over burning down Madcraft's proxy base. Gremlins have been spotted, but it's not nearly enough. That crab is just such a distraction for everyone involved. Madcraft should be able to take it out. And the Widow... Did the Widow even do anything? I think the Widow just died. Still, Madcraft's commander under heavy fire. Does have Aerial Cloak on their own, though, which is helpful. Top of the Nimbus is able to... Nimbus is able to get rid of the Gremlins. I mean, why not? Dante as well, getting rid of most of the artillery, preserving the commander for now. Madcraft's commander still a bit iffy. But the Dante is doing its job. As much as the slings try their best to get rid of it, it's... Ooh, actually, it is kind of falling down. Maybe... Maybe throw on some constructors to help repair that, because that's... That's not going to last otherwise. Indeed it doesn't. Dante goes down once again. This time even farther into Pudis' back lines. Which is really unfortunate, because... It would work out really well. Like, it would work out perfectly if Buddhist had repaired that a little bit. Like, that might have been game. But that's kind of the story of this game, is just all these different attacks that aren't quite working because they aren't properly supported. And as a result, both players were able to maintain their position in the game. Like, Madcraft, just, like, not enough anti-air to get rid of Nemesis, the, the warrior, the Reavers went down. Although Madcraft's commander going down is going to be huge. That might seal it. Madcraft is... Really down in economy, they're about to lose the rest, or most of the rest of their wind generation, and that is it. There's, uh, well, that's a GG. Well, that's that's. I'm about to throw in the towel. After 35 minutes. Well, thankfully I don't have much else planned today, so yeah, we can just keep doing this all day. <laughs> well, that is. That is that, Pudis. Both players having a bit of a hard time actually making anything stick, but in the end, they managed to take it. So that is that for round one. And if we look at the stats, so yeah, Pudis, Fruity, Morjor, Tripmasut, Clivers, and Bakhtiv Danta, or Bakhtiv Danta, Bakhtiv Danta? Yeah, Bakhtiv Danta winning the first round. But of course, it is Swiss, so that's just a seeding question. But yeah, we'll be back with round two in just a few minutes, so stay tuned.